Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we have a very important video to react to. Shocking truth, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned in the Bible. Mind-blowing by rational believer. Yet again, I say this is a very important video because if it holds true, the implications of it would be indeed mind-blowing. As a Christian, I read the Bible but didn't find Prophet Muhammad within it. This is why this video is of special interest to me personally. Let's have a look. I have read the Bible through many, many, many times. And others such as I have read it many more times, much more educated than I could ever be, understanding both Hebrew and Greek. Uh, Mohammed is not mentioned in the Old Testament. With this countless number of reading, the man doesn't see it. How can that be? I said, you see, what has happened is this. First, that Muhammad is mentioned by name in the original scriptures. The Old Testament, according to Christian authorities, was preserved in the Hebrew language. And yes. the New Testament in Greek scriptures. Correct. Greek language. In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, it reads, Hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei bainat Yerushalam. Is that true? I don't understand Hebrew. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. The word Muhammadim is Muhammad Im, Im, I am Im. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. You see the first verse of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God in Hebrew there is Elohim. Yeah, that I know. In Hebrew, Ella stands for God. Elohim is a plural form to say with all respect and reverence. Plural of respect. The royal form. In all Eastern languages, including Arabic and Hebrew, there are two types of plurals. Plural of respect as well as numbers. True. In the Quran also we find the very same thing. Like the verse Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Yes, and this is why Christians use the plural form found in the Quran as an attack on Islam to say, hey, don't you see, even the Quran speaks in the plural form, which indicates a trinity. Who is this us? We're not going there. Ask any Muslim. Who is this us? Is Allah, Jibreel and Muhammad like Father, Son and Holy Ghost? No. no. But is us, who is us? When we are told in the Holy Quran, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say he is Allah the one and only. Here he's talking about us. No Arab Christian has ever asked the Muslim, I said the Arab Christian, has ever asked the Muslim, who is this us? Because he knows in his language, there are two types of plurals. Right. Plural of numbers and plural of respect. In our language this too. This as is like in royal proclamations, you yes. have plural of respect. We have decreed. On that note, guys, I have to cut it off here one more time. Please let me know if anybody speaks Hebrew and can look up those verses to really clarify and translate for us and let us know if it really spells Muhammad. Says the queen. We. Thank you very much. Who is this we? Not she. And her husband and her, her son? No, no, no. It's standing for herself. Out of respect. Plural. Sure. So Elohim 
is a plural of respect. Im. El is God. Ella is God. Elohim is more than one of respect. Ask any Jew. This is his book. Ask him what is his im. He said, look, in my language, this is the plural of respect. God is one, but out of respect we speak like that. Im. Makes sense. Muhammad im. Muhammad im. Plural of respect. We really have to look this up. Let's put the word in some online translators and see what they say. Will they translate this word or just pronounce it in its original form? I'm curious about this, but I would really like to hear it from a Hebrew speaker. Please let me know in the comments. The translator says Mohammed. Or Mehmet even, huh? Alright guys, I couldn't resist. I'm on the page saintbible.com, the Song of Solomon 516. And as you can see, here is the text analysis. I compared it with the video. It seems to be exactly this word here. I could be wrong. It is translated into is lovely. However, I copy it from here and bring it into Google Translator as well. And as you can see, here it states aloud. So basically, I am lost. I do not get the same results with Google Translate. Please, a Hebrew speaker, one last time in the comment section, enlighten us. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Right. Yes, the name Muhammad does show up. It does say Muhammadim, but the name Muhammad is very plainly in the text. <laughs> If this is really true, it would be groundbreaking. In the Hebrew language. In the original, what they call original, it's there. But they have translated that in English as altogether lovely. So this beloved of mine is altogether lovely. When you read altogether lovely, you can't associate with the word Muhammad. No. You read it a thousand not. times, altogether lovely, altogether lovely. Or let's say in another language, the praised one, the praised one. That might be the reason why I didn't find it in the Bible. Muhammad means the praised one. But he said the praised one, the praised one. You can't think that he's talking about Muhammad. Though Muhammad means the praised one. You have no right to translate names of people. Anybody. Your name should be retained. Mr. Black is Mr. Black, though he's white. You have no right to translate names of people. But they have been doing that. Muhammad Im, they translated as altogether lovely. But the word Muhammad is there in the Hebrew language in the original. So we said, look, you have lost the name Jesus Christ, according to the Holy Quran, says, Wa is qala Isa bin Maryama. says, Behold, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, in me, Rasulullah ilaykum. So most certainly, I am the messenger of God sent to you all. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min al-tawrati. Confirming the revelation which came before me. Wa mubashiran bi rasulin ya'ti min ba'd ismuhu Ahmad. And giving you glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. Muhammad and Ahmad are synonymous terms for this mighty messenger of God. Ahmad, that is what the Quran tells us. But Christian says, look, it's not in my book. It's not here. There's no Ahmad and there's no Muhammad. Nope. So you are left with no alternative but to analyze what is there. Yep. You see, they have uh, verses in the Bible. I would really need to learn Arabic and Hebrew to get a full understanding of the Abrahamic faiths. You see, they have uh, verses in the Bible, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, where it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus says. 
it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But yes. if I go, I will send him. Exactly. I'm very aware of this passage. Muslims will say that the comforter is Muhammad. However, Christians will claim that the comforter is the Holy Spirit. However, now looking at this whole subject from the perspective of Ahmed Didat, that we potentially have the wrong translation, puts everything into a different light, of course. And when he's come, he will convict the world in respect of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not in me, and on and on. He says, if I don't go, the comforter will not come unto you. We say that comforter is Muhammad. So yeah, that's the, the same Muslim chapter, claim. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. Now, nah, you haven't got that capacity. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Exactly, the spirit of truth. And therefore, obviously, Christians believe that that spirit is the Holy Spirit. Spirit of truth. Yes. Who is the spirit of truth? Ask the Christian. Is the Holy Ghost. True. Sure. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. So who is the spirit of truth? They say the Holy Ghost. I said, all right. If this is the Holy Ghost, tell us now. What new things has he given you in the past 2,000 years? He said, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. But before we expound this aspect, let me reread to you this verse with a little emphasis on That's the pronouns. Essentially, said, the description of the Holy Spirit would be that if we receive the Holy Spirit, we would know. Therefore, we would exactly know what the Bible means. There are certain people that claim that if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will understand the Bible and you will see it from a different light. However, Ahmed Didat here claims that the message then would have to be new. And he is correct on that. People that say, that claim they've been in contact with the Holy Spirit do not come up with a new message. It's interesting. I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them. Ah. Yep. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. True. Eight masculine pronouns. I say, it ill befits a ghost. You agree? Here I disagree because the he pronoun is used for God himself as well. Man, 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 man. Eight times. There is not another verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine pronouns or eight feminine gender or eight neuter genders. There isn't. This is a unique verse for a unique personality, Muhammad. Man, man, man. Not a ghost, not a spook. As I said, this is not too convincing to me because he is used for God as well. Or he, the son of men, etc. But we are told he's a spirit. Is Muhammad a spirit? I say yes. That's what your Bible says. You see, every time the word spirit is used in your Bible, I'm telling the Christian, it doesn't stand for the Holy Ghost. Because in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it, we are told that seven spirits of God went out into the world. I say, you believe in seven Holy Ghosts? He says, no, there's only one Holy Ghost. That's, That's a very good spirit. point. I mean, should be seven Holy Ghosts. No, spirit doesn't stand for Holy Ghost every time. Then in the same John, the same John, in the first epistle of John, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For yes. many false prophets have gone out into the world. False. This one is used by Christians as well to attack Muhammad and claim that he is a false prophet. Prophet is a false spirit. True prophet is a true spirit. The same John is using spirit for a prophet. Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe in every prophet. Saint John, in the Gospel of Saint John, he says, he says, he that is born of spirit is spirit, and he that is born of the flesh is flesh. So do spirits beget? Do they cohibit? He says, no. Then how can you be born of spirit? No. What it means there is that who is spiritually inclined is spiritual. Who is materialistically inclined is flesh. What brought you here? 
tonight. Some kind of gift that you were expecting from D-Dad? You know, he's going to give you some sweet meat. What? Some chocolate? Is that what brought you here? If that was the case, and suppose I give it out to you, you are materialistically inclined. Material things brought you here. So you are a materialist. In the language of the Bible, you are fleshy, you are of the flesh. Materialist. Sure. If it was spiritual consideration, motivation that brought you here, then you are spiritual. There is, of course, the Christian perspective that claims that you would have to be reborn, newborn even, of the spirit, which means that you would be in touch with God and not with the flesh. Ultimately, it goes further than just saying somebody is spiritually inclined, another one is materialistically inclined, but it is the sheer difference of somebody that is connected to his instinctual knowingness of God and somebody that is completely disconnected of God and therefore just dwells within the flesh. He that is born means the thing that motivates you, that brings you up into being. If it is spirit, spiritually, then you are a spirit. And if you are fleshly, you are flesh. Material, you are flesh. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Nor does he speak out of his own desire, it is but a divine revelation which is revealed to him. He was taught by an angel who is mighty in power. Those to whom we gave the scripture recognize him, Muhammad, as they recognize their sons. Yet a group of them hide the truth knowing. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Very, very interesting stuff, especially the part about the translations. I didn't know that prior to this video, and therefore I will investigate by myself. But moreover, as I said already, I do not speak Hebrew. I do not speak Arabic. So therefore, I have to ask yet again for a Hebrew speaker here. If we have Hebrews watching, please post in the comment section. This would be of utmost value, not only to myself, but to all the viewers here on this channel. Thank you very much for that. Guys, if you like the video, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. I updated my Patreon as well. If you guys appreciate my work, consider supporting this channel via Patreon. Thank you very much, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.